There is actually a glitch in the product research software that you are using, where, the, where Jungle Scout, Viral Launch, you name it, can show you a product is selling thousands of units a month, when in reality, it could be selling zero. I'm gonna be showing you an exact example of that happening, as well as seven other things you really need to know when doing your product research. Now, I want you to understand that this is an intermediate and advanced discussion on important things you should know. Now, these are mindset hacks as well as exactly, I'm gonna explain exactly how these tools work that show you all of these revenue estimates and estimated sales a month, because when you don't know how they work, one small little glitch like this, this one I'll be talking about, can cost you a lot, a lot of money. I personally made mistake number seven, launching my very first product, and I see them all the time when I'm talking to students that I'm doing calls with or mentorship, and they, they constantly bring me streams of products that have these mistakes when they pick them out. Please do not do that. The first one is called the product opportunity score. Almost every extension has it at this point, and it is right here, and it's call, It's kind of worth, it's really worthless. Let me show you some actual examples. This right here is the keyword gold rim cups I put into Amazon. And when I pull up our handy dandy viral launch, it gives it a five out of five star product idea score. When I pull up Jungle Scout, it's gonna give it an eight out of 10. Meaning these must be the, this must be the perfect product to launch into if two extensions are saying it's this good. But really, it's an awful market to launch into. And because these things don't take into so much into account, really all they can take into account is a number. It's a formula. And so it really takes in, it shows you how much revenue the products on this page are selling. Also, by, also takes into account how many reviews these products have. And that helps determine how good the product is. But it's missing some really important things. First of all, it doesn't take into account how many searches a product's getting a month. Uh, this keyword right here, Viral Launch is showing it's getting 330 searches a month. So this keyword isn't, isn't even generating really any sales because it's only getting 330 searches a month. But these tools don't include that. Uh, I'm also pretty positive they don't include how much profitability a product actually has. Some products on Amazon have just garbage, garbage margins where you can barely make any money unless you're buying thousands and thousands of units and getting your price down. Where other products on Amazon still have really good margins, 100, 200% return on your money. And there's literally no way I can think of for these tools to include that kind of information because they would somehow have to know the, they'd have to know the product price. And they don't know how much these products are getting for, how much the cost has shipped them from China to the US. They also can't take into account how many people are launching this product in and how popular it is. And that is one of the scariest things. Everybody who wants a product where there are 10 sellers the day you pick the product and there are 40 sellers the day your product gets into inventory. For this specific product, and this is why I think it's a terrible product, besides the fact I can't figure out how to add more value to this product than the competition, so if I go over to Jumpsend here, this is a, it's a website, people give away their product uh, for almost free. You can see here there are, for this one giveaway site, there are seven people giving away this product or the rose gold version of it for between 40 and 90% off. Personally, I don't wanna be in markets where this kind of stuff is happening and there are probably seven to 10 deals websites where there could be just as many people giving away their product for these kind of discounts. I don't want to be any part of this market and I really don't want you to be either because of this, this kind of stuff. But these, again, it looks like the best product market to take into account. And the other really scary thing is almost every new person I see, they, they think this is a way to determine the good, the viability of a product. So they see five, they see five stars, they see eight out of 10 and they launch the product without doing their due diligence. I see it over and over again. And so you're competing against, this is why so many new sellers come into the space. And I don't, want you, I don't want you to be a part of that because that is when price competition will destroy your margins, make it very hard to get ranked. Second mistake uh, is not understanding how these sales estimates work when you, on these product research tools. You guys can see that when these product research tools are showing you sales estimates, they are taking the average of the last 30 days from, from the research that I've been doing, the, the Excel spreadsheets I've put together, 
it looks like they are taking the average sales rank for the last 30 days and using that to determine how many units the product is selling. Now the problem with this is when a unit stocks out, when a unit starts selling very well, it goes into season, you make mistakes and you think your product's selling way better or way worse than it really is. One really good example of this that kind of includes seasonality is with some lunch boxes. I had two students come to me last month, at least two, that thought lunch boxes was the product to sell. And while one of them had a very good idea for differentiation, the problem is looking at this product is back to school time had just hit. So kids and, and mothers were buying back, were buying lunch boxes for their kids. So the sales were way higher. Usually you guys can see here on the, we'll go more into depth in this in a minute, but this product was selling way better, way better than it normally does. And so you've got to take into account that, especially coming up in December, these products are going to be selling three, four times some of them, how three or four times what they normally do. So when you do product research in December and January, please do not think that your product's going to be selling $40,000 a month, because if that's what it says, there's a good chance it's way, way lower than that. Now, the third mistake that I, that kills me is people thinking reviews are literally everything. I, I like to throw around, I, I put this bullet as reviews are worthless. They obviously are not worthless. You want to understand how many reviews your competition has going into the space. But if we look at this gold rimmed cup space, you guys are gonna see how many reviews the competition has. Eight reviews, five reviews, 69, one. 21, 51, and a lot of these products are selling pretty well. So it looks to all these new guys like, oh, this is the perfect market. All I have to do is come into this space, get a few reviews, and I will be killing it. Well, that is just not, that's not the way to think about it. I, I do not want you guys disqualifying markets because they have too many reviews. The comp when the competition has too many reviews, in some way that's good because way fewer people are looking at that product. What I want you to be looking at is not how many reviews they have as much as how much you can improve a product. I'll talk about it. I'll put a link to my favorite video below on how to improve a product, but you should be looking to launch products that have more value than the competition. And when you have more value than the competition, the number of reviews that, that the competition have matter so much less. It still plays a part, but it just matters so much less. And that's the strategy I do. I work on when launching products. And pretty much every big seller that I talk to, they, they, they work on the same strategy, more value in the product that they launched in the competition. Now, number four, you need to be, you need to be weary against competing against Amazon because it is not a level playing field. Amazon has some crazy advantages that you don't have when you're competing against them. Let's go take a look at a space that I see thrown around a lot um, when people talk to me and it's called these bamboo plates. Now these bamboo plates, there's nothing very exciting about them, and the numbers look really, really, really good. Let, let's take a look at the numbers here. We're gonna be looking at the monthly revenue right here in this column, and you can see that our top seller does 130,000 a month, followed by 75, some really, really good numbers. And also, we can see that some of these products have almost no reviews. Nine reviews for a product doing 75,000 a month. 31 reviews for a product doing 54,000. So it looks so good. It looks so good. But what we got to check out is the top four sellers in the space are sold by Amazon. And these are the distinct advantages they have that you just, you have to be very strategic to compete well against them. Because first of all, when I sell a product on Amazon, the first 15% of my selling costs go straight into Amazon's pocket. It's called the referral fee. And so guess what? Amazon doesn't have to pay that 15% to themselves. So right off the bat, they can price their products 15% lower than you can and make this and do and, and, and still survive. Okay. On top of that, they, we also have to pay for shipping. You know, often I'll pay maybe three to $5 to ship my products out. So if I pay $5 to ship my product, uh, Amazon is probably paying even less. Because if UPS is really charging, let's say three and a half dollars to ship a product, Amazon can upmark that and sell it and charge us four, four and a half dollars to launch a, to, to ship a product. I have no clue if they're doing this or how this really works, but it just seems to make sense to me. And so there's another 50 cents, another dollar, maybe more, hopefully, probably not more, uh, that they, they don't have to compete with, with us. 
And so often they can sell products at prices so low that it's very hard to compete as an FBA seller. So again, that requires us to innovate more. A lot of people are really are worried. Oh, I can't sell on Amazon because Amazon's selling all the big products. They're going to come in and destroy the market. Well, from my previous experience, they're pretty bad at innovating and pretty and they really just like to jump on the bandwagon. So for those of us who innovate and love I love innovating. That's why I like Amazon. That's that's why I really like this game. There's still money to be made. That's that's just the reality of the situation. So, let's move on to number 5 and this is the one that this is the reason why listings can show they're selling thousands of units a month, $100,000 a month, and the product you're looking at may not be selling at all. Literally could be selling nothing. And every research tool I've seen has this mistake, this glitch, I'm going to call it. And it can cause you to launch some really stupid products because they may not be selling as well as they do. Now, here's the example that I really want to bring into play. It's with this product right It's with this product right here. This product has four different variations in it, okay? Two of them which are cups and two of which are silverware. Now the problem here is, let me click on a few of these. This, this extension right here I have is called Rev Seller. It's gonna show you the best seller rank for the products as I click through them. So this first one's at 6,984. The second product's at 7,498. This third product's at 7,498. How do three products have the same best seller rank when they're three different products. And it's very hard to determine how Amazon does this, but when you create a variation listing, a lot of the times those products are going to share the best same best seller rank. And so all of the sales, they're all rolled up into one best seller rank. And so if I pull up viral launch here, you can see that three of these four products have the exact same BSR 7,498. We have three products. Uh, those three products end up in an estimate of about 500 sales a month. And so Amazon is essentially taking the sales for all three of these products and rolling them up into one bestseller rank. So what could be happening here is one of these products is selling 100 units a month. The other one is selling 500 units a month for the average of 600 that we're looking at. And the third one is selling literally zero units a month. And there's no way to know which ones are right, which ones are wrong. There's really no way to determine it. Nobody has a solution to it that I, I've seen and I don't think there is one. And so it adds a huge variability in, uh, into your product research that you really can't figure out. And so a lot of times when you see listings, this is when it's very scary. Let's go back to this bamboo thing, okay? You see that these products are selling so, so well and you'll see a lot. One product looks like it's selling $130,000 a month but what could actually be happening is you click on this and you realize there are six variations on this listing. Each and every one say, shares the same bestseller rank. And so uh, the product you're looking at could only be selling, it might only be selling 50,000 a month or 30,000 a month, but because all those BSRs for the listing roll up into one, these tools show that this product's selling 130,000 a month. So it can be very deceiving and without clicking into, you need to be clicking into listings uh, when you're really look, looking at a product in depth and to see how these variations play out. Because again, this product could only be selling 50000 a month and the other variations on the listing could be selling the other 80 k Again, it leaves some variation to the game that you cannot explain uh, that makes it a, more difficult to do product research. But can you imagine, you think a product is selling very, very well and it's really the other variations that are and so you decide to launch that product? And that's the kind of mistakes that we can have from this and nobody has a solution on how to actually fix it. I don't know what it is uh, to fix that problem. So let's talk about some other important things here about how you actually break down listings when you're looking at them. You need to be watching out for a couple of things. The first one is product launches and the second one is going to be seasonality. Now with product launches, when somebody launches a product, a lot of times, a lot of times they're going to be doing giveaways to get their product ranked. They want to get that product they want to sell as many units as possible to get on that first page. And if we take a look at this product right here, you can see, we're going to take a look at the Keepa graph. And if you guys haven't looked at Keepa graphs before, you don't know what they are, please do not do any product research until you understand what a Keepa graph is. But you can see the sales rank for this product. They launched, it's only a 17-day-old listing. And they started out, and within days of getting their product live, their, their sales rank was down to 1,400 
in their category. And that's probably about 800 units a month on average if they can sustain this best seller rank. So somehow they went from non-existent to an average of like 800 units a month just by give, just, just on the product launch. And it's because they were giving away units. And if you don't know this, you, you don't know the strategy, you don't know what you're looking at when you see these charts, it can make, you guys won't know what you're looking at. And if I all I have to do is go over to jump send here and you can see that this exact person is giving away their product for 90% off just to try and get sales. And that's exactly how they got their best seller rank this low. I'll go over to the search, I go over to the search results and you'll see that they're not on the first page. Hell, they're not even on the second page for most of these keywords. But somehow they've got that sales rank so low and it's because of giveaways. And it's manipulating the rank and you need to know it exists. Also, when it comes to seasonality, you gotta be so careful. Go back to this lunchbox example. We can see here, this is why I like Viral Launch. This is one of the biggest reasons why I like Viral Launch more than the other extensions because they give me this screen and it shows me best selling time of year for the product, average price increase over the last 90 days. And you can see here, when I go over to August, this is showing me that this product was selling on average, you know, first here on the first page, it's selling about 4,800 units during the month of August. But all I had to do was go one month sooner and, and the product's only selling 2,000 units a month. That's less than half. And this little misnomer where December is the best selling time of year for every product is so false. If we look at this product for Lunchbox, this is like the worst selling time of year for Lunchboxes. So the last one here is watching out for stockouts. And again, this is understanding the full competition in your space. We go over here and take a look at this product right here a garlic press please don't ever please don't ever sell one of these products but i take a look at the keep it chart and i could see that this product this the person who sells this product is just so bad at keeping it in stock you can see that the best seller rank is down low and then all of a sudden wow it spikes up incredibly high and then it comes back down and this is simply because they go out of stock they're out of stock and that's the issue why their best seller rank goes so high and then comes back down but when you're looking at products and you don't know what these spikes are and you don't understand what's going on, you're likely to make mistakes. So if you wanna see more intermediate and advanced stuff uh, on selling on Amazon, there's only one way you can see that and that's by clicking the subscribe button and then hitting that bell so you know when I put out videos and you get notified.